Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I'm Jamie. I read a lot of books and actually I've been moving over the last month and still settling in over this one. So I read less books than I generally expect of myself. Uh, anyway, um, I've been slowly getting back to my normal reading habits. So, um, here is a bit of an update on what I finished since my last update, which I haven't actually gone back and rewatched my last video to remember what that even was, which shows you what kind of month it's been. Anyway, um, I finished three print books and one audiobook since the last time I remember updating, which is probably the last time I posted an update. Anyway, so the last audiobook I finished was The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, uh, which was good, and I actually found it rather humorous and worth a reread. That one I might revisit in a year or two if there happens to be a, a buddy read sort of thing going on somewhere, because um, I enjoyed it enough to reread it anyway. Um, I did it as an audiobook, so the next time around maybe I'll do it as an ebook. Um, yeah, that was pretty good. And that one is a book on the box all's 1001 Books You Must Read Before You Die list. It is the other one on that list by Wilkie Collins. So now I am, I think, done with Wilkie Collins according to that list. Uh, there are other books by Collins that are available as LibriVox audiobooks. So I will probably add them to my playlist at some point. Um, but yeah, that was a, a good experience. I like audiobooks for um, transitional periods like what I'm doing now because I can listen while I'm putting things away or organizing things or putting bookshelves together. I acquired two new bookshelves from Walmart and they're supposed to be easy to put together. Um, I don't know who they're um, basing that on because they're not easy to put together. Um, they're supposed to be done with just, you know, hand tools, no power tools. Um, I'm not sure who exactly is putting these together that that is um, considered easy, because um, my hands are exhausted from the first one. Um, so I still have to do the second one. Um, they're the five shelf um, Walmart brand or like mainstays, I think is what they call um, their brand. Yeah, they're, uh, they're interesting. The one I put together, it is standing up, and I don't think it's done any shifting or horrible noises. So I guess it's stable, but um, it's not how I would have designed the shelf. I'll put it that way. And at some point, I might go in and, and stabilize them both with additional... Like hardware, but I need power tools and, and you know, yeah. So I've been getting ideas for how to make the shelves better. I'm eventually going to just start building my own shelves. I'm going to watch for, you know, old furniture with good pieces of wood and just start bringing them home and cannibalizing them for bookshelves because I can build a better bookshelf. I'm going to get tools that will allow me to do that. Anyway, uh, nice little aside. I also put together a cat tree while listening to audiobooks. Um, so the cats now have a nice tall cat tree. So that was fun. Um, and so some of that was while listening to The Moonstone. But I finished it and then I moved on to the first of the books I have to show off. Because I have it in print. Remember this guy that I had two copies of? The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. Um, not only did I have two copies of it in print, my sister already had a copy, so she doesn't even want one of the ones I had. And I ended up listening to it as an audiobook, so I didn't end up reading either one. Um, it was an interesting adventure in um, marital adventures and 
you know, couples that should have married and didn't, and then they married other people, and then they regretted it until tragedy happens, and now they could marry each other, but now they're, you know, they are scarred by their experiences, and yeah. Um, if you can tell, I, I, I didn't really care for it. It wasn't terrible. I could follow along. Um, some of the names are weird. Um, there's one, um, like Walid, um, something like that, that the audiobook, you know, I hadn't been listening or reading and listening at the same time. And if I was to guess who that person was and what they looked like by that name, as a modern listener, I would be assuming they're Middle Eastern, maybe, and um, that the spelling is something that would be derived from the Arabic. The character in here, and it, the pronunciation is apparently okay, and it certainly looks like that, but it's, it's a name I've never come across before as a last name from, for English people. Um, so, yeah, that was odd. It, it seemed like Hardy was doing that thing that a lot of fantasy authors do, like making up outlandish names to be more interesting. I don't know. Um, so that kind of threw me off. It's supposed to be just English people doing marriage stuff. Um, yeah, so so that, that was a bit different. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be England and Paris, and it's not supposed to be set anywhere outlandish, and they're not doing anything more adventurous than what happens in a Jane Austen novel, so I would expect names kind of like that. Anyway, so that was my take on it. It was okay. I wasn't terribly enthused, but it, you know, I followed through it without uh, losing my attention too much. Um, but I don't feel like I need to reread The Return of the Native. So, um, yeah. I don't remember if I've read very many Thomas Hardy books, but I'm getting the impression that if I have, he's not one of my favorite authors. Anyway, so that's the first book out of this stack that I finished. The second one actually out of this stack that, that I finished chronologically, because... I finished this guy first, uh, When Legends Die by Hal Borland. This one is about a young Ute boy who ends up orphaned. First his, so his father and mother flee a company town in Colorado, um, I think in the San Luis Valley area. Yeah, near Horse Mountain. So in the San Luis Valley area, um, the father was working in a company town where he was being paid basically in scrip. Um, and he wasn't supposed to be able to leave. Or I don't know, not technically scrip. I think they were actually paying him, but they were charging him enough in rent and supplies. that. Anyway, um, so he was basically locked into working in this company town as um, a way of getting out of being in trouble because he and his buddies had left their reservation and gone off um, onto a stream in non-reservation land that was being managed by the probably Department of Agriculture or Forestry, something like that. Anyway, um, managed by the government so that the government arrested them for trespassing um, because they were poaching and, you know, killing deer and fishing and all that without licenses. And, um, so rather than get in trouble, uh, they, or one of them anyway, I don't remember if all of them or some of them end up agreeing to this, um, end up going to work in this company town. Um, yeah. And get locked into this work arrangement um, so after a while our our guy and his 
um, partner get kind of conned into getting married. Um, it was odd too. Like, um, yeah, the the. I don't remember if he's Catholic. I think he's a Catholic priest, but um, the the religious leader in this community shows up and, and says, you, you guys have to be married. You know, it's not enough that you guys say that you're married. You need to actually be married in the eyes of the church, and it's going to cost you five bucks. Um, so they, you know, save up their five bucks and you know keeping in mind five bucks is like a week or a week and a half's wages it's not cheap and they're already indebted to the company and so it's a big deal and really mm, from a modern reader's perspective this is a con this is really just how to squeeze money out of people that can't say no um anyway so they get conned into getting married and then when their kid is born, they get conned into baptizing him and giving him uh, an American name. Um, I don't remember if this is all, like, yeah. Um, this is early days in the story. Anyway, this all happens in a rush um, early on, setting up, you know, the early part of this kid's life. So he's christened Thomas by the white people in this town. Um, his name is otherwise um, Bear Brother, that he gives himself that name when he's old enough to give himself a name. Um, so his dad dies, and then his mom, after a while, um, has been raising him in the Ute way up in the mountains and um, she dies she was a, a great basket maker and she had been supporting them by making baskets and going down to the, the nearest town and trading them um, so she's taught her son everything that she knows he's been raised not to speak um, anything but Ute and to only know the old ways because that's what he's been raised in. Um, it's not like she decided he only needed to know these things. It's just that's what he learned. Um, but he grows up thinking this is the way it should be, period. Um, and when somebody remembers that, that this kid belongs to his parents that they remember from when they were in town, um, this guy Blue Elk decides that um, his other schemes aren't going so well. He wants you know, some way of making money and that he will go up and get this kid and bring him to the um, like boarding school area. Um, and that they're supposed to pay him like $5 to go up and get the kid and $5 more once he gets there or something like that. So this is how he's going to make some money. So he goes up and he tricks the kid into following him down to the school um, to teach people the old ways because the kid's so good at them. And when he gets there, the kid is you know, basically locked up in his room and his bear has been taken away. And uh, yeah, the, the bear becomes a sticking point because they at least... I was worried they were going to kill the bear. They didn't kill the bear. Um, but for a while it looked like that was the way they were going to go with the story. Anyway, so um, he gets tricked into being in this school. And over time he does eventually get uh, convinced or broken down or whatever um, to learning English and learning how to live in the white people's world. Um, and goes through all these adventures. Near the end of the book, he, you know, kind of comes full circle. He, he returns to his roots and, you know, either meets the bear again or meets the descendant of the bear or something. Um, so anyway, it was pretty good. 
Um, I'm sure there's a movie of this one. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but it just strikes me as something there's probably a movie for it. Um, it was pretty good. Actually, I, there were points where I was not sure I wanted to finish it. Like, oh, I kind of know how this is going to go. Uh, it didn't get that bad. Um, uh, the kid, Thomas, becomes a, um, a Brock rider in rodeos. So he becomes a star Bronc rider in rodeos and becomes wealthy and famous and but he can't ever shake his past. And it's kind of him deciding who he is now that he has the capacity to make those kinds of choices. So um, it was pretty good. It's not actually very long and you know it's just a paperback um about a mm, little over 200 pages so not very long uh packs a lot of story into not very many pages so that's good and you know so it's fast-paced interesting it does a good job of talking about the ute culture and the ute way of life um so that's interesting and uh, if you're from the southwest region, you'll recognize the terrain, which is always nice. I always like reading books where I can imagine where they are because it's something I'm familiar with. So that was really nice. Anyway, uh, I wouldn't know if it's exactly five stars out of five stars, but like four, four and a half stars. It still isn't one that I need to reread again. It's going away, but it was okay. It was good. And then the last book that I finished is, well, and this one, you'll see there's a bookmark in it because it's going to take an hour to upload this video. So while I'm uploading the video, I can very easily finish what's left of this book. So this book is a reread. And I actually have reread it already not too long ago. So normally I wouldn't count it. But this time, when I finish this book, it is going away. Because the question that I'm resolving in reading this book again is, do I need to keep this copy of this book? Um, this is Magician Apprentice by Raymond E. Feist. And Feist actually released a author's preferred text of Magician. And I've listened to it in audiobook more than once, I think, at this point. Um, so the question is, do I really need to keep the older, you know, original form of this book uh, now that the author's preferred text is out? Do I miss the parts that they cut out for this book? Um, and the answer, I think, is going to be yes. Um, I think at some point I'm going to get a a set of books that's the preferred text rather than the original because yeah the scenes that are missing from these older ones I kind of like them like there's there's bits where I'm expecting it and it doesn't happen and yeah so um so yeah I think this is going to be one that's going to go away when I'm done reading it um and the same will be true for Magician Master, the, uh, the second book in the series. Um, the preferred edition is Magician, just both combined in one book, whereas these were published as two separate books. This was pre-Brandon Sanderson. Um, so now and the, the fantasy genre is quite used to the idea that um, those of us who read fantasy will read a thousand page or two thousand page book. Uh, we really will. So the idea of a book that's the length that two of these would be, yeah, we'd buy it. As a matter of fact, for a lot of people, the length would be a plus. So um, yeah, so nowadays, um, I don't know if they would even make you know, established authors anyway split their books like this. 
But, of course, this was Feist just starting out, too. He wasn't an established author yet when this came out. Um, anyway, so this is going to go away. Right now it is not technically finished. By the time this video is uploaded, it will be finished. So it does count. And this brings me up to 20 books, finally, since the Read What You Own Challenge began that I have finished that were in my possession at the beginning of the challenge. So I'm deciding, I will decide probably mm, now, whether this means I get to unlock the ability to acquire books now, even though I'm supposed to be doing it every month. Considering how November went with all the moving and everything, I might actually just allow it. But I don't get to do it again until I finish another 20 books. I think that's going to be the way I play it. Because I have a, a bag of books, not like a whole bag, but a stack of books in a bag that came from one of my siblings from Thanksgiving that I've not been allowing myself to pull them out of the bag and look at what I've got until I'm allowed to acquire new books. So I will do an unbagging of those books um, as a video. It's kind of like a book haul. It basically, it's a book haul. So we'll do that probably in a video in the next couple of days while I'm trying to finish more books. Um, and then I don't get to acquire more books officially until I finish another 20 books. So we'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully you guys are having a fun reading month. Um, it is mm, nine days into December at this point. So we only have a couple weeks left. Um, I am frantically trying to finish books. Okay, not frantically. But I am trying to finish some more books before the end of the month. And I am preferentially trying to finish books I've already started. Um, so hopefully by the end of the month, I will be able to not carry over too many into January. I will be doing some videos about reading plans for 2024. Um, we'll see how all that ends up going. Um, but for now, I'm going to get back to my book before this video gets too long and let this video start uploading. So I will catch you again soon. Bye guys!